Lynn back up to the uh, to the podium for his next presentation, um, and then uh, this is just a shorter a shorter piece, and then we're going to have uh, time for a nice uh, a longer break. But again, if you do need to um, move and use the washroom, please feel free to do so. I understand the washroom upstairs on the main lobby is a little more conducive for wheelchair accessibility. Um, so if you um, need any assistance uh, getting that direction, please just ask one of the programs and services staff. And I'll turn it back to Dr. Levin. Um, thanks so much. So when I was asked to um, give this talk, I've given a, a lot of talks over my career, and, and I spoke to um, Jessica at the MS Society, and I said, rather than talking for the whole 40 minutes, um, we're losing the mic here, um, rather than talk for the whole 40 minutes, can we actually teach people about research? Can we actually not just listen about it, but might we be able to teach people about research and actually have them participate in today? And um, you'll have that chance today, and we hope you'll, you'll take advantage of that. Um, again, I can't help but recognize my team. We're going to see this three or four times today. And um, Colleen Cochran really um, headed up the team. She's back there in the back. And so if there's any questions, we're going to, we're going to um, ask Colleen. But thank you, Colleen, and again. Thank you, everybody, <laughs> for being here. Um, so what is research? Um, I kind of like these two definitions. Um, it's creative, right? I like that. It makes us you know, very human. Creative, um, systematic activity, so it has to be organized, uh, undertaken in order to increase knowledge, in this case, knowledge about disease. Um, and another definition is research is a process of steps. It usually takes more than one used to collect and analyze information to increase our understanding of a topic or issue, and it consists of posing a question. We're going to do that today. Collect data to answer that question. We're going to do that today, too, and present an answer to the question. Well, we can't answer it today, but we promise we get, we'll get back to you. Um, what is clinical research? Well, all of that has to involve people and not animals, and we try to uh, find new and better ways to detect, uh, diagnose, or follow people with disease and, and treat it. Um, clinical trials, that is testing a medication uh, for MS, is one type of clinical research. We're not going to do that today. We're going to test something else to see if we can figure out why people with MS get worse over time. Um, I think clinical research should be interesting. I think today's question is interesting. We're going to go over it in detail and why I think it's new and different and has not yet been done in MS. It should be engaging. Um, I hope my team, I brought 17 people today in the MS Society to help engage us. I hope that works. Um, it's important. Um, you know, uh, I, I think you all will agree we're here to do things that are important. Um, it should be beneficial, and then most importantly, research should always ask a question that we don't know the answer to. And today, you're going to help us all try to answer that question. We don't know the answer to this question today. This is critical now. This has really become the buzz term for any researcher in any field uh, that involves people. And that what is knowledge translation? So knowledge translation is an umbrella term for all activities involved in moving research from what we do on this side of the podium, from the lab, the journal, from academic universities and conference into all of you. And we're now actually obligated to do this as part of grantsmanship, as part of writing a grant, as part of asking for funds and competing for funds. We have to give a detailed plan and how we're going to teach you about research and teach you about our research. And hopefully this is the first step today. And I'm not going to read to you um, uh, about the definition of knowledge translation on the bottom, but my read on this, and I stand to be corrected, that it might have been actually here in Canada, the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, that came up with the first definition of knowledge translation. And we're all going to do that today. OK? So the name of the study today is Action Research Arm Test in MS, or ARMS. Um, I do want to recognize my wife who designed, uh, designed today's study. Uh, thanks, Audrey. Um, it's actually the first time in 20 years or 25 years uh, that we, we've actually made the time and we have been able to collaborate on the study. So we're just thrilled about that. And I'm going to walk you through um, the study in great detail and then uh, explain to you how you can participate in it. OK, so one, um, clinical research, the, the critical thing is it's completely voluntary. 
okay? No one can make you do clinical research. It's a research study. You're involved in it because you have MS. It is completely voluntary. And this is critical. If you do not wish to participate, nothing happens. You don't lose any change of care in medical care, no changes with me or our, or our nurses in the clinic. And this is crucial because we're all healthcare providers before we're researchers. Okay? Um, and again, you can ask any question that you want, either here, right after I'm done, or throughout the day to any of my team members with the uh, t-shirts. Okay? Why is the study being done? MS has really spent several decades on gait and how people walk. And I think what's been absent in MS is upper extremity function. And we hear about this in the clinic all the time. What are the subtle things? We, I've noticed a lot here in Saskatchewan, a lot of people use their hands to work. And there's actually um, a lot of twisting and a lot of turning and a lot of fine coordination, a lot of strength. And the upper extremities are crucial to that. And in MS, it's been almost all about gait. And we were interested in asking the question about um, how upper extremities work. And some of you may have been involved in that a little bit. In the clinic, you may have done the nine-hole peg test, and I'll show you what that is. But the question is, just moving some pegs into a little dish, and you'll have that chance to do that today, is there something better that would give us more information about function of your arms and your hands? And we think there is, and that's known as the Action Research Arm Test. I'm going to show you that, and you'll be able to do that today. And then we're going to ask you some questions as well about how you're feeling today about your disease, um, and as well as your upper extremity function. Okay? Um, so this is the other critical part of, of research. One is it's completely voluntary. Two is it does not change the relationship with your doctor or nurse or anyone else in the room. But the third thing when you're involved in clinical research is to ask the question is, what's going to happen to me? What am I going to do? What might happen to my body? Right? And this is really critical. So what's going to happen today if you choose uh, to be in research? Um, one is we're going to ask you, um, we're going to go through the consent process. I'm going to do that at the end. We actually have to ask permission to do research. But after we ask permission, um, we're going to ask you to fill out a, f a short questionnaire all on an iPad. We've become very techy. Everything today is on an iPad and electronic, nothing on paper. Um, and that's called the upper extremity functional scale. It'll just take a few minutes. Everyone is going to have the chance to do the nine-hole peg test, and we'll go over that in detail. I'll just show a little bit about today. And then we're going to show you how to do it um, in the uh, interactive research clinic just down the hall. Don't worry about it. We're going to teach you how to do it. Uh, and then you actually do the action research arm test as well. The fourth thing we're going to ask you to do is actually fill out a quality of life scale. So actually, this really came from all of you. For years, um, not only about MRI, not only about all the quantitative things, you all have demanded on researchers, on the MS Society, on all the funding agencies, we want some sense whether this is going to improve our lives or might it. Now, this, um, this questionnaire asks a lot of questions. You don't have to answer part of it if you don't want. But it'll take about 10 or 15 minutes, so please be patient and take your time. This is the nine-hole peg test, and actually we're going to ask you to do it on, on both hands, and we usually have you do it twice. And so what happens, um, there are, like a tic-tac-toe board, there are nine pegs. They actually start in this little dish, and with your right hand, we're going to ask you to take them from the dish, put them in the pegs, take the mat, and go back, and you do that twice in each hand. Not very hard, maybe about five minutes. This is the ARAT, the upper extremity test, uh, that my wife and, and her team has introduced today. And actually, this is what we're really interested in. Are we going to learn more about your upper extremity function in this than here? And so again, um, it's actually kind of a game, and it's kind of fun. And we're going to actually ask everyone to maybe um, take a glass of water or um, take a tube and put it on top of the box. There's about, I don't know, eight or nine tasks here that we're going to ask you to do. And again, don't sweat it. We're going to teach you how to do it. And this is what the research is about. Um, this is what the questions look like in the quality of life scale, just so you get a sense. Um, there are, we ask a lot of things about motor function, sensory function. This happens to be about cognitive function. You'll be asked a question, OK? And this is all going to be done privately. We protect your privacy. It's done uh, in kind of a little bit of a booth. Have you had any difficulty concentrating? And these are the answers. And just choose one and move on to the next question. So that's what it looks like. Okay, 
Other things we're asking permission today, and this is a se separate line item. Um, today we're going to learn a little bit about MS and a little bit about your upper extremity function and how you think about your disease and your quality of life. If you're in our clinic, we're asking you permission, and this is a separate line item. You have to check a box. We're asking permission. May we use your clinical data and combine it with our research data to learn more about MS? And then this is all completely anonymous. We'll talk about it at the end. It's critical. And actually, that's next. So actually, um, as you go through the process today, and we'll walk you through it, this is completely anonymous. After station one, you get a number, and that number is protected. So there's a master list that becomes protected electronically by several passwords, and it's also protected physically behind locked, closed doors, both in an office and in a hospital. Okay, so privacy is crucial to everything we do in research. So we've talked a little bit about it's voluntary. It doesn't change your medical care. Um, we have to ask your permission. And finally, we have to maintain your privacy. Privacy is something we take very seriously. Um, you may or may not directly benefit from the study. We're going to learn more about MS today and how everyone's arms and hands work better. What are the possible risks? This is the other th question you want to ask. What might happen to me or my body? Right? Great question. Um, here, you've seen the test. Um, some of the tests may cause some fatigue. You may um, feel uncomfortable with some of the items in the questionnaire. Remember, you don't have to answer them all. Um, but really, the risks are really quite small today. It's a non-invasive study. Um, we always have to put this in. There's a risk of your personal health information being inadvertently released. Um, we take this very, very seriously at the university. We're monitored for this to actually prove to people that we're doing the job that we promised to do. And we do everything we, in our power to maintain privacy. And we're starting with that. Um, and, and that's a critical part of this study and every study. Also, you may withdraw at any time. You're halfway through the day, and you've had it, and you want a cup of coffee and a snack. You don't have to finish the study. Nothing happens. We don't come after you with a wet noodle or anything else. <laughs> um, uh, the results, um, we will be um, uh, giving you uh, yearly updates on these results. You can get more information from our website as shown here. It doesn't cost anything, but actually to participate at the end, anyone who's participated, we're going to have a raffle and give out some really nice swag. Can I have that gold bag over there? Give me a second. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, in, the lovely, in the lovely gold bag. <laughs> We have some really just appropriate for today, some beautiful U of S uh, swag, and they come in a set, gloves, hats, and a scarf, and we'll be drawing a raffle for four of these at the end of the day for people who choose to participate. Where's my flicker? Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Any questions? I'm going to take them in just a minute. Yes, I'm going to take all your questions in a minute. We'll go for as long as we can, but we want to get to the break. Anyone in a black T-shirt can answer your questions. Okay, so consent. Um, I've actually just presented the protocol to you. This is what you're going to see on the iPad, page by page by page by page. Exactly what's on the iPad is what you've just seen. At the end of that, we have to ask um, your permission to consent. And this is that process here, and this is where you sign again. We always have to ask permission after we've explained um, the entire study, and we will ask um, for your signature here. Okay. So this is my favorite slide. <laughs> Oops. No, this is my favorite slide. <laughs> Where's Colleen? Okay. <laughs> um, so how are we going to do it? Okay. A couple things. Work with us. <laughs> Be patient. We have five consent stations. We don't have 30 consent stations. If you want to participate in this, we promise we will stay here all day and let anyone who wants to participate to participate. We just can't consent everybody at once. So let's talk about the process. In the room across the way, the first thing you're going to do is enter the um, first ever interactive research clinic. And actually, I walked into it this morning. It is just amazing. And I do want to recognize the MS Society and my team one more time for setting that up. 
I mean, this is completely new, never been done, and they thought about it from scratch, and you walk in there, and it is really impressive. The first thing we're gonna ask you if you enter is, um, two people will be at a table when you walk in to pick up your participant ID card. Everybody gets a card with that. Everybody gets a card with that. I promise, Catherine, I'm gonna get to you. Everybody, <laughs> oh, you're at the table. Catherine's at the table. Who else is at the table? And uh, uh, Nikki, okay, great. Okay. So you're gonna meet Catherine and Nikki at the ID table. They're gonna give you that card and that has your raffle ticket on it and we punch the holes to make sure all the steps are done. After you, and it has your ID number. After you get the card in your ID number, you're gonna check in and this is where we protect your privacy. After that, we do match your name with your ID number and that's it. Everything on the card is your ID number. You lose your card today, nothing happens. No one has that, it's completely private. Okay, so after you'll do that. Then you'll consent and do the questionnaires. Again, so this is the consent process I showed you. And the two questionnaires, one about upper extremity function and one about quality life. This is gonna take a little while. Please be patient with us and patient with yourself. It may take as long as 10 or 15 minutes to do all of this. And so just be patient here, we will get to everybody. Now, once you're consented and you've done the questionnaires, you've now given us permission to complete the study, and you can do the nine-hole peg test and the ARAT anytime you want. You can do it during lunch, you can do it at the end, you can do it two minutes after you're consented. Once we have permission, um, you can get to those last two stations any, anytime that you want throughout the day. And then finally, at the end, you're gonna hand in your ID card, and then that's the, and then we tear off the raffle ticket, you keep half the raffle ticket, and then we have the raffle at the end of the day. One more thing, as you go in there, again, there's a lot to do here, there's a lot of posters. Don't forget to check out the posters from the MS Society, as well as the scientific posters, mostly from our students, um, about MS and research in MS. And actually there, in there, you'll be able to sign up for another study. There. So Dr. Knox um, has another study. We're not going to complete it today, but if you're interested in clinical research in the future, if this has turned you on and we've convinced you that it is completely uh, voluntary and privacy protected and you would actually like to be involved in another study, uh, Dr. Knox will give you that opportunity as well just to sign up for today. Um, and it, oh, Whatever. Oh. And then, um, I want to thank everyone for being here today and having a hand in research. And we hope you'll participate, participate in it. We're just thrilled that, you, that, you're, that you're here today. Um, and I've gone through the rest of this before, so I'm happy to take any questions about the process or about the study. And we'll store questions here, and by all means, ask them all. Um, but we do want to get to break, and you'll have time to sign up then. And again, anyone with a black T-shirt um, can answer your questions. So thank you. Yeah. Yes. I have a legal question. About four years ago, before you came, SGI and Wisdom decided that medical intervention uh, was necessary to affect driving licenses and the Saskatchewan government insurance program, which is also run by your employer, the government of Saskatchewan. And so, what occurred? So the, the question is, um, so what's the, what's the, so I understand SGI has rules. Right. So what I'm saying is, is that I hope that in your veracity, and I believe you, doctor, because you're a very honest person and you come from a system that I do, the ANA, is, is that there is some confidentiality left in the systems there. Right. So absolutely, um, I'm a doctor first and foremost. And, yeah, that, and that's and that app, so. You're welcome, but the actually, we have, a, we have a, an answer to that in the back as well. Yeah, so um, a question is, how did you decide to um, test the arms instead of the legs? 
Um, just uh, just because I'm selfishly, I have more problems with my legs than my arms. So, uh, so how does what's the difference for you, and how did you guys make that decision? Sure. So I think it's a two part. I think it's a two part um, answer. So the, and the question was again, um, why test arms and not legs? I think there's been an extraordinarily important focus on legs and walking and leg strength in MS. And so I think we asked the question uh, in two ways. One, um, we think upper extremities have not been carefully evaluated. And the second thing is maybe upper extremities are affected more than we think. You know, I think it could be very subtle. I think um, the fine movements that we do are so precise that if we, uh, and it might be, we might be able to measure a new kind of disability that would actually promote people staying on medication. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yes, there? yes. Is there any, oh, sorry. I'm getting, I'm getting up close and personal. Is there any follow up to this? Like we're in the city today, like is there gonna be a follow up thing that we need to come in and do this and you know an ongoing thing that we've signed up to which sure. we're not driving to so, yeah so I think there's two kinds of follow-ups you know once we get all the data together um, we will put that data on our website where's Colleen I'm, and actually I think on your um, permission slip you can be asked to be emailed so you'll either it'll be on our website and we'll teach you how to get there and I think we can ask you permission how do you want to be contacted but just so you know this studying is going to be continued we've already applied to the Dean for a, a Dean scholarship to con continue the study in the clinic um, going forward after today so this will this will begin here but it will it will not die here okay anything I can ask about the consent process or, um, or the study um, before we take a break. Yeah. Anything? Sure. One more question. So is there any requirement or strong encouragement to continue to, you know, become involved in other, what I'm trying to say. Like for instance, I, I uh, with my crazy busy life, unfortunately signed up for a, a, a physiotherapy type of thing and then I've, I was just overwhelmed with mm. you know, trying to do it and I'm wondering, is this gonna be a similar thing where you know, we're going to be required or strongly encouraged to to participate in multiple steps of this process? Um, you know, again, remember, this is completely voluntary, and you, complete the, you can complete the task today and then yeah. walk away from it if you'd like. Okay, but Does are that, you gonna be giving us opportunity to do the test again and evaluate our progress? And yeah, all in that the, stuff? So I think two things. I think, yes, um, in the clinic, we will ask permission um, to, do it, to do it again. Yeah. But as far as it being uh, time consuming today, we hope we would fit it into your schedule. Oh, no, schedule I'm today. fine with today, I'm just, Okay. I, was just, I, was just, I was wondering, am I going to get an email every month and a half no. asking me if I'm ready to no. come in and do it? No, 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 no. You're okay. not going to get, um, you won't get contacted that okay. way. Okay. No. Okay, that's all. No. Well, great. Well, thank you very much. Um, and we'll hope you par you'll participate, and we're thrilled that you're here. Thank you. All right. It is break time. So thank you for the, uh, the questions. And again, the team in the black, uh, the black t-shirts are the folks to chat with about the study. Head toward, back towards the, uh, the elevators and then to your left. And, they, and you are, yep, you are ready to, the team is ready. If you want to go and at least complete the consent process, you can do that now. And then the, um, the PEG tests and the uh, arm test can be done throughout the day. Ready, set, go. Yeah. 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 